Hi everybody, welcome very much to the channel once again. And so he's here bringing to you another game from the top of the online ladder. We have on the color green Chinese player playing as Chinese versus Pei on the color yellow playing as the Ottomans. The map is Gorge and welcome to the channel once again. Your support is greatly appreciated. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and use the links down below to find me and Faye live on Twitch as well. And here we are on a very cool matchup. Actually, I always like this matchup. But I remember, for example, on the most, not on the most recent tournament, but I think on either the Elite Classic or Master of Our Realms, there was Hill and Dale on the map pool. And these two sieves were picked a lot on that map, like, against each other, right? And I think China has the advantage, though. They have better eco. They can always, they can also produce military faster. Because I, th I find that the bonus from Ottomans, a lot of sieves also have them, but better, right? The thing is, Ottomans, they have a lot of little bonuses, which build up to a very good civilization. I just think, especially for the top level, um, Ottomans is just, like, too slow. Right, to get their things going, but once they do, it's they're pretty good. So let's see what bonuses can the Ottomans enjoy. Right, so, the pending first, military school, three units, always good, but it's hella slow, bro. It's really, really slow, right? Then, they can edge up with Twin Minaret Madrasa and get free food for the rest of the game, some berries that are consumed faster, or they can go Sultani Trade Network and get some free traders and some passive gold for the rest of the game. Pretty nice. Then they can get from the Vizier Point some free sheep, some extra mining uh, gathering rate, which is very good. So you can see already free units, free eco, it's really, really good. All right, and then you can get free siege on the castle edge as well. Well, the Chinese, they basically have that, they have the same bonuses, but more or better, right? More eco in terms of the supervision of the Imperial official, taxes, and then they can also have, they can also produce units faster. The difference is that Ottomans, they don't need to sacrifice any economy to do that, or they don't need to like choose, or I want to make these specific units faster, because all their buildings, if around the, uh, a blacksmith, will produce faster, right? While the Chinese, they have to take that Imperial official and then supervise a specific building, but the production speed is really, really quickly. The only thing that the Chinese don't have is free units, but especially, I think, until Castle Age, you don't really care about that with supervision. They always can get a little bit of the advantage. But let's see how Fei Chan will use the Ottomans here. It's going to be the Sultanic Trade Network, so this indicates to me some type of fast castle play or a prolongated Feudal Age play where you don't have so much people on gold and you keep fighting feudal and then suddenly you have enough gold to edge up to castle age. So it's like a, a less risky edge up because you are keeping your enemy in feudal. You have a lot of army to protect your edge up if you seem necessary, right? The Chinese play usually is, I mean, right now it changed a little bit. It's not 2TC Song Dynasty. It's just, a, just Song Dynasty with 1TC because you get ahead economically anyway just with the faster production of your villagers. Let's go. Imperial Academy bringing, brought up from our Chinese player. Fei. What is the first? Okay, that's it. Bringing the deer in with the spearman. That's going to be immense value here on Gorge. But well, sometimes the viewers are so loud, right? Sultan and Trade Network coming in online as well. Let's see if we can get the information of the ranks. We can know Pei's rank immediately. 40 on the ladder. Top 40. I cannot see the information of the opponent because it's still not showing the match on AV4 World and I cannot type that on the search, right? So here we are. Castle Age is upon us. Not Castle Age, I bet, guys. Feudal Age is upon us. 
And we have an early wheelbarrow, no early wheelbarrow. Second Imperial official coming out from our Chinese player, gathering a lot of wood but no stone. So that indicates to me a very feudal play, as in making a bunch of archery ranges or barracks and try to press the Ottoman. Fei is also a lot of a lot on wood, some on gold, four on gold plus the traders. That deer will be amazing. And all that wood, I think it will be for a blacksmith and then more buildings around it. Because remember, Ottomans do have cheaper military buildings, which is really, really nice. Allows you to transit into any type of formation, composition that you want rather easily. Easier, I mean. And our Chinese player is getting some vision over here. Tower on the gold for Fei. Oh, but is it wise? I mean, I don't think Fei knows about the play here. Pro oh, Pro Fei didn't even scout the enemy base. I mean, against China, it's like, you you know what, they're gonna make both landmarks, both, most likely. And usually, like, 90% of the times, Chinese go, they go first with Imperial Academy, usually. Not always, right? And let's see what our Chinese player is checking out here. The Wait, but the scout... Okay, it's the... It's the... Um, the, observer, the observer mode bug where sometimes it does not show what the player has already scouted, but we saw his scout going through here, so there is no way he didn't saw that, right? And we know that he saw that, because it's not fog of war, right? So developers, please fix observer mode, uh, caster mode. It's it just like so good already, just like it has some, like, a bit of these shenanigans, right? Oh, it's gonna be Barbican Rush? It's been a long time since I've seen since I've seen one, but it also looks like a Castle Age play from our Chinese player. Fei is going directly to Castle Age, got some free units, right? Free, no, not even a blacksmith to make those free units faster. Nope, just straight to Castle, and then we play from there. Fei also has no idea about any military buildings from the opponent. Barbican of the Sun. Oh, but the tower is there, it, the tower does not reach where the villagers will be in. And I think Fei has no idea about this. Yeah, Fei only sees now. Pretty speed will walk out, but there is a bunch of, And is this GG? Fei can age up pretty soon. And even if there was not enough gold, Fei can just wait a little bit. To get the passive gold from the traders over there. Tower is going down. I mean, our Chinese player is losing some units over there. A villager goes down for Fei. Repairing the tower. Trying to kill the most amount of units. Arrow slits come through. Still repairing. Our Chinese friend here is losing a lot of units actually. He's almost self food, self food, and we can go. Ca but then we go castle. And we can spam men at arms. We can also get them from the military school. That's a roar. Chinese player lost a lot of units over there. Right. Fei now going for more stone. Maybe for uh, more military schools. They do cost a hundred stone each. House going down. Traders still trading. Wi-Fi trade. 120 gold per minute. That's a lot of men at arms per minute if you think if you think about it. If I could have sold some food here, could have sold some food and went to the castle age already. And Fake is ahead on villagers. What? Is our Chinese player not producing villagers? I know it's the traders. Ooh. Because this comes with three free traders, and what? What? Oh, the horseman finds the next gold source, but it's okay. One villager can go down; it's not a big deal. Securing this gold is way more valuable than one villager. Here we go. Tower is up. Mehmed Imperial Armory is coming in. Here we go. Blacksmith in the middle, boosting, but boosting the speed of all those military buildings.
Oh, but our Chinese player moves out to the deer with supervision and several techniques. That's an incredible food source over there. Villager repairs the landmark. That's great. And no more Zuganus here. So, no more archers, I mean. So, the Spearman cannot dive that villager. So the landmark will... Be, bro, it's actually a very good repair rate. Look at that. One villager is almost over repairing the damage from the Spearman. Almost, not really. Right. And here we go. Mehmed Imperial Armour is up. That's a lot of villagers on gold. Do we have barracks? It's gonna be stable and archery range. So, Archer Knight? Our Chinese play is very well far away from the Castle Age. So, I, I... Whoa! Whoa, does that... Is it because of the heal? The villager goes down. Three bills lost for pay. Still, villager equality. Equity. That's a lot of horsemen. So, switch to horsemen and archer. Sipahi coming in. Doing some damage. Okay, uh, uh, I think a switched men at arms is better than. Um, I know it's gonna be Sipahi still. Rimanganel coming through. Tower is going down, it's almost down actually, halfway through. Villagers need to repair exactly. Here we go. Nice repairing. They'll just go back into the tower. It's now stone improved fortification, and that means torching down will take way, way longer. But it's still. It's doing a lot of damage, it's also taking a lot of damage. Bay receives, I think, the first Vizier point only. Could be the Imams to heal the units. No, it's 8 sheep. 8 extra sheep and 15% more gathering rate on mining materials. Chinese player is placing a lot of pressure in here. Ooh, you, 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 that sprinkle shot. Sh ooh, it was, bro, it was such a great range, right? The horseman went down. Castle Edge is almost here for a Chinese player. Manganel is almost out as well, but I don't think, no, only three horsemen. So they, they, they will be able to snipe the Manganel. No, they will not be able to snipe the Manganel, that's what I mean. Villagers burning down the ram. It's not enough. Sipahi come in. Uh, Spearman already here as well. And face still going with Sipahi Archer. Come on, switch to men at arms. Switch to men at arms. Okay, villagers are here. Good damage on the ram. A ram is almost going down. And ooh, one more torch. No, we need a bit more. Without this gold, I mean, it's not. I mean, of course, it's bad, but. It's not as bad as in other scenarios because of Sultani Trade Network. Ram might go down here, but I think the tower just goes down as well. They maybe should focus on taking down the Barbican of the Sun. And it's quite unfortunate because the second goal for Faye is behind the Barbican, right? So with one building, you're stopping all, not all, but like 80% of the gold production. There you go, the Manganel is in here. Archers frontlining. Sipahi come in to help. Manganel shooting. Shoot! Great damage, but the horseman just like the Manganel. If the Manganel goes down, that might be GG, but that's a lot of DPS, not on the Sipahi. Sipahi numbers could go super high here. Remember, a lot of those units work for free, and we have more archers coming in, more Sipahi coming in. I really think the switch to Manatarms would have been way better. Like the second TC for Fei, Fei cancels it. Fei will force it on the gold. I knew it. We need that gold, and we need the gold ASAP now. And Fei's holding. Not a lot of green units here, no castle edge as well for our Chinese player, maybe over investment, a thousand wood in the bank, looking for a final transition, look uh, for a transition into granaries. And I think Faye's holding. Hold it. Yeah, that's a lot of Shipahi. How fast can we make Shipahi now? 23 seconds, it's pretty nice. A horseman is without supervision. No, that's being supervised. It, okay. Nine seconds is really good for a horseman now, right? But that's a lot of Sipahi. They hold on really, really well. Now our Chinese player is kind of torn between Castle Age or Farm Transition, but no gold in the bank. Now moving to gold immediately, quickly, quickly now. Raider still providing some gold. No, now the problem for Fei is no food because the second deer is also behind the Barbican. That's extremely annoying. 
Maybe we switch that. No, Rams are already coming in. I was thinking about switching this into a trebuchet, then kill the Ram, the Ram, to kill the um, Barbican. But no, we have some Rams in the building. Horseman is still trying to come in, but it's too many Sipahi. This Horseman will not do anything valuable right now. Second DC is online indeed. That's a bunch of people on gold. A lot of people on wood. And now, we, will we see the transition into Manetanum's? Three military schools, four military schools. So, they did got the extra vizier point, allowing for an extra military school. That's going to be a lot of free units. And we've got knights coming in. So, they also got... Wait, no, I think that came from the stable. Mether. Meth Mether. It's, it's, cool, it's not the name, but just a cool name. Meth Mether. Right? Mether is here. And it's that's not a happy feudal age army. Right? That's a huge mass of cavalry diving in. Five, six spearmen in the back. We'll do a lot of damage to this cavalry composition. Phase walking back. Can't do much right now. Gotta hold, gotta hold. Fate only. Six villagers behind. Ram coming in. Another vizier point for Faye. What are you gonna be? Rams coming out to kill the Barbican of the Sun. Rams also here to kill the town center. It's a good move for my Chinese player, but Chinese player needs to go Castle Age. They will soon just get good enough army where the quality of the units will compensate for the lack of numbers. Janissaries coming in as well with the method attack speed boost. Those guys are almost machine guns. And no response to the Rams here. Barbican will go down. And if Barbican goes down, we've got free gold here. That's one, one landmark less for our Chinese player. Walls coming in, delaying the work of the Rams. Manganel is here as well. Horsemen should be going around, but the Janissaries will melt them. Remember, the Janissaries do extra damage versus cavalry. Manganel shot on the Spearman. That's good damage. Horsemen killing the villagers. Here we go. It's fight time. Manganel in the back. And I think that this is, I think this is it. And this is a fight that Fei Chan will win. Janissaries numbers in the back. Looking healthy, the method go went down though. Good focus from our Chinese player. Zuguno now focusing down the method. That's good work. Villagers taking down the Rams though. Oh, but the Chinese army is just obliterated. Manganel shot still in the back. Another Manganel not working. And that's it. The TC goes down though. Is that alright from Faye? We don't know. We have to see. Another TC. Bro, Faye, two steps ahead. Triple TC, you kill my TC, I make two more, we don't care. Here we go. Don't uh, don't underestimate Faye. Faye has the plans. Sometimes they're too crazy, but when they work, they work. Astronomical clock tower for our Chinese player here. The, oh, and this is really bad. Deer is running low. And we have no food whatsoever, no farms, no transition, nothing. Berries, not great. We have a bull. You have a boar right there. And Fei completely swung the match around. And remember, even though Fei is behind on villagers, we have three units coming in and faster production. So that helps out maintaining the moment. Oh, getting pop cap here will be really bad. I know, I think that's only 30. No, it's 40. So yeah, pop cap will be for our Chinese player. Castleage is here for the Chinese player. We need some nest of bees. Yeah. Okay, no pop capping. Janissary has arrived to melt the um, horseman. The barricade is down. Yep. Time to go for the berries, time to go for the gold. And I think the Chinese player has no idea about the Triple TC of Fei. But the thing is, does Fei have enough wood to keep the Triple TC working? Ooh, beautiful raid. Beautiful, so many villagers going down, amazing. 
Unbelievable. Rate of the Sentry. Switch into Palace Guards. For the Chinese. Oh no, but his eco is being butchered. I think there is no way back for our Chinese player if we don't see a second TC Song Dynasty play. I mean, Song Dynasty is already in, but not the second TC, right? Villagers running for their lives, but there is nothing here, no food, only a bunch of wood. They're just running away again, 9 military units for 32 units, and I think this is over. Pay with an incredible hold, incredible defense, and an incredible comeback. Like, seven nests of bees will save the game for our Chinese player, but that takes too long. More raids, more raids, fail ready, almost 20, no, it's 14. Villager lead. No relics, no sacred sites. Huge walls coming in. More cavalry coming through. Villagers were so lucky. But I think FaZe saw that. FaZe going around now. FaZe looking for more casualties, more blood. Another village will go down. Villagers coming in to, go, to gather from the berries. But this Hipahi will gather the villagers. Oh, FaZe not realizing. But now the Sipahis will realize by themselves. Here we go. All those villagers will go down. Meanwhile, FaZe on the third town center. So the economical advantage will just keep growing and growing and growing. Yeah, no food for our Chinese player. I think it's over. I think it's GG. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We have the ultimate cheese play. Keeping the production. It's GG. No cheese will save you. Right here, right now. Good game gets called. Fey, amazing comeback. Now, our Chinese player should have went to Castle H sooner. Yes, but Fey did very well in the second TC into third TC. And GG gets called. Well played, well played. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. Use the links down below to catch me and Fey live on Twitch. And thank you very much for watching. Your support is greatly appreciated. Let's just check the stats. 4k more food for a Chinese player. But not used right. You know what I'm saying? Let's go.